Hey guys, this is Valentina Palladino for Ars Technica and today I'm here with the Apple Watch Series 2. So this is the first update in hardware that Apple has made to the Apple Watch. You wouldn't know it by looking at it, but there have been some hardware updates and a lot of them are in the fitness realm. So inside of the Series 2 is a new GPS and it's also water resistant in a very unique way where the speaker will kind of eject the water if you're in the pool or out in the ocean. It's water resistant up to 50 meters in that way. There are also some software updates with WatchOS 3 that also help with fitness, but also help the watch kind of be more of an assisted smart watch, something that you can actually use rather than being just a passive device on your wrist. So right here we have the Apple Watch Series 2 and here we have the original Apple Watch. Not to be confused with the new Series 1 Apple Watch, which we'll talk about in a second. So the Series 2 Apple Watch has a few different features in terms of hardware that you're not even going to notice the difference of if you look at both of them side by side. So inside there's a GPS and because of that, it is maybe a hair thicker than the original Apple Watch. You really can't tell both when you're looking at it and when you have it on your wrist. It doesn't feel heavier at all. It's, it's pretty much the same. The display is also brighter. It can go up to a thousand nits, which is really good if you're you know, looking at your watch outside a lot or if you just need that brightness to be able to see the small writing. But I usually kept mine both when I was wearing the original and when I was wearing the Series 2 at about 50% brightness, and that was just fine for me. Also on the inside, you have a new CPU that's supposed to make the Apple Watch 50% faster than the original and has a new GPU, which will make it twice as better in terms of graphic performance. And I did notice a little bit of a difference. It was definitely faster, a little bit zippier than the original, but it just seems like a very good, easy experience using it. I didn't experience any holdups or hiccups while using it, both using um, native apps and third-party apps. Um, so overall, the experience was really good in terms of the performance upgrades. So when Apple debuted the Series 2 watch, they also announced the Series 1, which is a little bit different than the original. So it has the original hardware in the sense that it has no GPS and it's not water resistant. But the Series 1 will have the better CPU inside of it. So it will be a little bit faster than the original Apple Watch. It'll have the same performance as the Series 2. If you want to buy a new Apple Watch now, you'll be able to get the Series 1 with the new CPU or the Series 2 that also has the GPS and the water resistance and all of that. The new Series 2 starts at around 369. Um, so that's going to be your benchmark for the base model of the newest Apple Watch. So let's talk about the water resistance on the new Apple Watch. So this is the native Apple Workouts app. And now that it is water resistant, you can track both pool swimming and open water swimming. Open water swimming will use the GPS automatically and pool swimming will not. You just kind of tap it. With this one, it'll ask you the pool length, which is really great because Everything that can track swimming, every tracker that does that, it will ask you the pool length, but you can go down to literally one yard length. Um, nobody's really going to be practicing in a kiddie pool, but a lot of the fitness trackers that can track swimming will kind of stop you at around maybe 18 or 20. If you're practicing in your own personal swimming pool or a friend's swimming pool that's just you know a backyard pool, not a full length professional pool, you can get more accurate, accurate results by putting the exact pool length. And if I were to hit next, it would just start the workout. So if you pull up from the bottom, there's this little water droplet here, and that will activate the water mode. And you'll notice that by the little water droplet on the top. Now, if you were to tap the screen, see it, I'm just trying to move it around, trying to swipe. It won't do anything. The screen is completely locked and the device itself is now in water mode where it won't be affected by any water that comes in it. And if you see here, here we have the little speaker holes and that's what's being protected because speakers need air to produce sound and this kind of blocks that off and it will capture the water so it can be ejected once you unlock and get out of water mode. So how you do that is that you just scroll on the digital crown completely until that goes away. And if you heard that little sound, that was the device ejecting the water. So when I was in the pool, I could actually see a little droplet of water kind of like shoot out of the speaker, which was pretty cool. But overall, the water resistancy and that kind of mechanism of ejecting the water from the speaker was very effective when I was swimming in the pool. 
So the workout app gives you a lot of options at the get-go to just record certain workouts. You have a lot of indoor and outdoor options for things like running, walking, cycling, and then Apple also includes things like a rower, stair stepper, and obviously the pool. So these are just workout profiles that you can choose from really quickly. Also, there's an other option right here where it will just kind of track your steps, your movement, your heart rate, and at the end, when you finish a workout, you can choose from an even bigger list of activities, including sports like basketball and soccer and even strength training. So don't be fooled by other and think that, oh, it's just going to be labeled as something miscellaneous. You can label it as a different activity. Any of the outdoor activities that you choose from, the GPS will automatically turn on. You don't have to worry about it and it will map your route. So the new onboard GPS in the Series 2 is what Apple calls an assisted GPS, which means that it uses the GPS's power, Wi-Fi, and a mix of locally stored data, satellite data, to locate you and keep your position throughout different activities. So if we were to start, let's say, an outdoor walk, um, I can choose a goal. Usually I do open goal. Um, you can choose from you know, distance, how many miles you wanna go, elapsed time, or calories burned. Most of the time I either do elapsed time or an open goal. And if you just press start, it'll count you down from three and you can just start. There's no waiting for the GPS to turn on. And as you walk, as you run, as you exercise, it'll keep finding your location using a mix of that GPS, Wi-Fi, and local data so that even if you go in like a tunnel or somewhere where you're going to easily lose GPS, you will still have your location when you go and look at that map after the fact. So it wasn't a very long walk, but when I go into the Apple Watch and end the activity, it'll give me just a little bit of a summary of what I did and I can save it or discard it. And since that was an outdoor activity, when I go into the activity app on my iPhone, I'll be able to see the map of where the GPS was tracking me. And in my experience, it's been pretty good. I mean, it also is color coded so you can see where you were moving fastest, a little bit slower and where you were paused. Um, if you need that type of information, if you're a runner. And the battery life is a big thing with the GPS because a lot of GPS devices are kind of drained because the GPS uses so much battery. With the Apple Watch, it, ge the general battery life is about, it's about two days if you're not using the GPS. And if you're using the GPS, you'll be able to use the GPS for between 30 minutes to 90 minutes during one day and the battery life shouldn't really be affected if you're within that range. And in my experience, that has been true. I used it for about 30, 35 minutes one day, um, tracking two separate activities, and the battery life really didn't take a hit, which was really good to see. And if you're using the GPS to kind of track a race, like a 5K, 10K marathon, the Apple Watch will track it consistently using GPS for five hours and 15 minutes is what Apple will um, estimate the battery life will last. There's also a power saving mode that turns off the heart rate monitor. So that will give you a little bit of extra time if you really need it, if you're doing something like a marathon. And here you have something new that's in um, watchOS 3, these little quick start menus. So, you know, I did a lot of elliptical workouts in the past week mixed with running and one that was 30 minutes, I had a goal of about 30 minutes on the elliptical, and then I had an open goal. So these are the quick start ones where I won't even have to choose a goal. I won't have to like do that extra step. This will, if I were to click on this, it would just immediately start the workout. Overall, the workout app is really easy to use, and all of that information automatically goes into your daily activity goals and the activity app here. Same goes for third-party apps that are compatible with HealthKit. All of that activity that you record via the watch with that third-party app will go into your activity score. So this is just kind of a abbreviated version of the activity app within the iPhone. Here you see like where I am with my move goals for the day, how many minutes of exercise I've done. Standing, it has, it has an automatic goal or a default goal of 12 hours. You stand for at least one minute and it will give you little reminders of that too. There's some hourly graphs here, and then you have your total steps, distance, and then little snippets of my workouts I've actually recorded today. So a different app that is its, its own separate thing is the Breathe app. 
And a lot of fitness trackers are doing this now. They do guided breathing, breathing sessions. Fitbit added this to um, a couple of its newest trackers. And essentially, the Apple Watch will guide you through guided breathings where you'll see you have seven breaths in a minute. And if you wanted to do up to a five minute um, session where you just focus on your deep breathing, the watch will remind you of, to do it every once in a while, but you can turn those reminders off. However, I did like this experience with the breathing app more so than the Fitbit breathing experience because this uses the haptic feedback to kind of tap you as you need to inhale. So you can completely look away from the watch, you can close your eyes, and you will know when you need to inhale by the um, haptic feedback, and then it will disappear when you need to exhale. You don't need to actually look at the watch while you're doing it. One issue I did have with the workout app is that there is no auto recognition of activities. With things like Fitbit devices, they have this thing called Smart Track, where for certain activities, very common ones like running and walking and cycling and things like that, it will automatically track activities that you do if they're over 15 minutes or so. And that's really convenient if you're someone like me and every once in a while you'll forget to go look at your wearable on your wrist and start an activity manually when you're doing it. But when I did have my briefing with Apple, we did bring up a good point in that auto activity tracking really only works when you're moving your arm with certain um, with wearables because most of them are on your wrist. So it would have to be an activity where there's active arm movement and recognizable arm movement. So I do hope to see that type of a feature come to the Apple Watch eventually because I think it would make the workout experience even more seamless, even if it did only work for things like running and walking. Now I should mention in the activity app is that if you were to swipe here, you can share your activities with family and friends um, who are also using the same program. So that's a new feature that we have with the activity app with watchOS 3. So one thing that kind of works in Apple's favor when compared to other fitness trackers is that there are a lot of third-party apps that both integrate with HealthKit and now have their own Apple Watch apps. That even if something doesn't have an Apple Watch app, if it integrates with HealthKit, all that activity that you record via your phone will sync up with your activity goal, the activity app. But I tried out a couple of third-party apps that are actually available for the Apple Watch. and. It's very hit or miss. So for example, one decent one is the Nike Run Club app or the Nike Plus Run Club app. Um, and this is the workout app that comes with the Nike Plus version of the Series 2 Apple Watch, but it can be downloaded onto any Apple Watch. So it really is just a running, a running tracker. So here, my last time I did this, I was indoor, I was on the treadmill. So you can easily turn that on or off. And then you can select your playlist if you're using that via the app. And here, this is my last one. You can see your history here. Um, you can also tap to see all if you wanted to see more of them. But if you were just to start that, it'll just start an activity. So it's very simple, it's very basic. It's what you can do within the mobile app as well. I, I did find that it was a little bit off in the distance calculations versus the workout app, but not by much. So if you use the Nike Run Club app regularly, if that is your app of choice, you have a little bit of a remote control here in the Apple Watch app version of it. If you were to just force touch, you can end it. So a lot of the fitness apps that are available for the Apple Watch basically make it easier for you to use on your wrist so you don't have to go into the phone to start different activities. Other ones I didn't have as much of a good experience with. So something like this, like the swing analyzer. I went to the driving range to try to try this out to see if it could analyze my swing. I started sessions and it just never captured me swinging. I probably hit more than 50 golf balls and it did not track my swing at all. I really couldn't tell you why this didn't work. I tried it because it was a free version of something similar called Ping, so you can either practice your swing or play golf, but if you tap this, you need to purchase the full version of Ping to even use it. And I understand why this is, you know, a lot of apps make you pay for them, but this was a free app to download and I thought it was just gonna be free to use at least to a certain point. But a lot of the workout apps I tried, you can download them for free, but you can't even use them until you pay some sort of fee. Especially one, for example, like an app called Sweat with Kalo, which is for circuit training and like just interval workouts, but you need to pay like a $20 a month subscription to even use it. And there are other apps like MyFitnessPal that, you know, it'll just kind of show you information. You can't really do anything with the Apple Watch app for MyFitnessPal. It'll show you how many calories you have left that you can consume, 
how many, um, like the breakdown in terms of protein, carbohydrates of what you have recordedly eaten, how many steps you've taken um, if you've been recording it through that app. So this is just kind of to show you where you are in your day. But if you just want to go into the mobile app because you need to log something anyway, this isn't really gonna save you a trip. So Apple did a really good job defining the purpose and what the watch does well with the Series 2 Apple Watch. In terms of fitness tracker, I think this is the fitness device that Apple should have come out with a year ago. Added features of the GPS and the added water resistance um, and the swim tracking. Those are really important features for a lot of athletes and just regular people who want to do things outside more regularly. And the workout app and the activity app working together, it's a really good experience if you're just tracking regular workouts. And it makes things more clear when you're looking at your iPhone at the activity app and you want to look back at your stats and it's very well laid out. It's a very good experience in terms of a fitness tracker. Are there some features that I would have liked to see? Yes, something like you know auto tracking activities. You're not going to be able to track sleep with it because it can't constantly work overnight and you get the same battery life. But Apple is doing what it did with the iPhone and it's banking on the experience. The experience is very seamless. If you use an iPhone, it's gonna be super seamless back and forth um, communication of data between your iPhone and the watch not just with fitness, but with all of your other apps as well. WatchOS 3 really did do a good job making it a better smartwatch. Um, you know, the messaging app is a little bit better. You can scribble things on the screen and kind of send them as messages. The dock is really nice to have where you can access apps very quickly. But I'm still not convinced that I absolutely need this watch. But if you enjoy the Apple experience and you like that kind of seamlessness, the Apple Watch might be the device to invest in.